Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me, James, and this is the Explorer Notes for Elena Walker on Extinction. Extinction was the third DLC to be released by Wildcard and acts as a conclusion to the canon story of Ark and its survivors. The map itself is entirely different to the previous maps in that it takes place on a ravaged Earth instead of Arcs in space. In the centre is an abandoned city referred to as the Sanctuary, and on the outskirts are smaller proto arcs representing both desert and snow biomes, and there's also a sunken forest and wastelands that surround the outside of the city. When we last left Helena, herself and a small group of others were able to escape through a portal known as the Gateway Project. Santiago, the character who was responsible for creating the Gateway Project, was able to home in on a signal on Earth that he believed to be the main base of operations. So sit back, relax and enjoy part one of the notes from Helena Walker on Extinction. It's been a while since my last entry, hasn't it? Between all that happened with Rockwell back on the station and the shock of arriving planetside, I've been in a bit of a rut. Even cataloguing the new species I've found has done little to ease my mind. Things down here are so mental that some people are wondering if we were safer before. Honestly, they might be right. Maybe that's why we were trapped on those stations to begin with. Luckily, Santiago's plans has given us all something to do. I'm hardly an ace with technology, much less giant bloody robots. But after all that's happened, I owe it to these people to lend a hand in whatever way I can. It's hard to believe that this is actually Earth, but the proof Santiago provided is undeniable. Unless you really enjoy apocalyptic events, could the Earth's rotation have slowed down, or worse, stopped entirely? No, that's rubbish. With the atmosphere out of control, all those abandoned buildings would have been decimated by wind and those giant creatures would never survive the shifting oceans, extreme temperatures and weakened magnetic field. Yet if all those space stations above us could somehow form a magnetic barrier and repair the atmosphere, well, anything's possible at this point. Maybe that's their real purpose, or maybe they're behind this mess in the first place. Whatever the truth is, I have to find it. There's no way I'm getting squished by a monster before I do. These machines Santiago's building are brilliant. Somehow he simplified the controls so even a weirdo biologist like me can move these big blokes as if they're their own body. Me, piloting robots, I've completely lost control of my life, honestly. Even Mei Ying was able to synchronise with one, and for a second I swear she cracked the tiniest of smiles. I think that brought me more relief than the mechs themselves. She fought so hard to get here, been through so much, especially that nightmare with Rockwell and Diana. I hope that in the end of all this, I hope I can find her some shard of real happiness. She deserves it. I had a talk with Santiago today. A real one, I mean. Not the sarcastic banter that is his preferred method of communication. I was pretty surprised. I didn't think that he had an off switch. He'd been thinking about the cloning chambers we'd found back on the station. Are we clones of real people? If so, are we responsible for their actions? And what is the point of it all? All questions I'd asked myself, but rarely had the chance to discuss. I told him that we can't control any of that, and all that we are really responsible for is how we live from now on. I'm not sure if that's the answer he wanted, but for now it's the best I have. Why does it feel like everyone's making sacrifices for me? Rockwell, Mei Yin, Raya, Diana and now Santiago. Just before we could finish powering on the mechs, the monsters finally attacked in force. Only one of the machines was operational, so Santiago used it to lure them away. By the time Mei Ying and I managed to power on our suits and fend them off, he was gone. There was no sign of him. Well, it won't be for nothing. Santiago, with the tools you've given us, I'll find the truth behind all this. Then I'll have those better answers you were looking for. I promise. With Camp Omega compromised, we decided to head for the wastes. There's not many of us left. There's only three mechs remaining, piloted by Mei Ying, myself, and a URE bloke named Kazuma. So we can't form that super weapon Santiago designed. That means if we run into anything too big or too nasty, it'll be trouble. Yet we don't have a choice. The answers are somewhere in that wasteland, and hopefully safety along with them. God, this whole piloting thing still feels bizarre but I guess my nervous system just linked up with the machine really well. And it's what I wanted, isn't it? I'm finally something more than dead weight for other people to lug around. 
I can do my part. I just hope I don't let everyone down. The mutated creatures in the wasteland can be as vicious as they are grotesque, but so far we've been able to fend them off in the mechs. There's been a few close calls that have had me worried though. The other day, Mei Yin just sort of charged without warning and nearly got herself blindsided. Not that I'm any sort of tactical expert or anything, but it just seemed reckless. That's not an isolated incident either. She's constantly trying to take on more enemies than Kazuma and I. I don't think it's a matter of ego. With Santiago gone, it's like she's put the burden of protecting the survivors on herself alone. Doesn't she realise that I'm right here, finally able to share the load? Somehow, I need to make her see that. It's funny how the one subject that managed to put Mei Ying at ease still had to do with fighting. After a fashion, anyway. I said that I want to talk strategy, but mostly I ended up showing her all the ridiculous tag team moves I've been sketching out in our mechs. The dossier driver, the bio beast bomb, the g'day mate. This stuff was gold. I can't believe she didn't go for any of them, but at least she lightened up a bit. For a while it was almost like we were back on the island failing to cook a decent meal and chatting about raptors. Bloody hell, you know your life's a mess when the good old days have you stranded on an island full of dinosaurs, don't you? Yet here we are. I'm still amazed we actually tried that, but more incredible, it actually worked. When Mei Ying said she wanted to try the May I Help You manoeuvre, I thought maybe she'd taken a knock to the head, but we really pulled it off. If only Santiago was here to see it. What an absolute ripper. To be honest though, I was terrified through the whole thing. I'm scared to death every time I get in that mech, but I keep doing it. Can't just rely on Mei Ying all the time, and even she can't fight all of these battles alone. I think she's starting to see that too. I know it's likely that my memories are implants, but they're so clear that I still think of them as mine. They still shape me. Maybe it's just denial, but I can't help it. I remember growing up in Darwin, the sunsets on the coast, the splendour and fury of the storms in the wet season, and volunteering in Kakadua whenever I could. I was an obnoxious little bugger, chasing after my next great discovery but I usually just finding trouble. I suppose that hasn't changed has it? I'm still hopping from one adventure to another and after this is over, if we find what we're looking for in this wasteland, what then? Will that be it? My last adventure? Somehow I doubt it. Even though he's gone, Santiago keeps coming through for us. That signal we found, the one that he talked to me about, I think we finally locked onto it. We picked it up a few hours ago, and it's been getting stronger. With a bit of work, we should be able to triangulate his position. I'm not sure exactly what we'll find there, but if it's even the slightest chance that it's linked to those space stations or what happened to the planet, then we've got to investigate. I think this is the spark we needed to lift everyone's spirits. We're one step closer. Why is this a debate? We finally have a clue and everyone wants to go and hide in a cave and what? Just try not to die? Sure, we don't know what lies at the other end of that signal, but that's the point. You climb the mountain to find out what's at the peak. We vote on the matter tomorrow. My stomach's passing the time by by tying itself into knots. Could I have come all this way just to be stopped dead by a few raised hands? Part of me thinks that even if I lose the vote, I should just head off on my own. But well, there's a bit of a complication. Mei Yin is voting for the other side. Not everyone sees things the way I do, but it doesn't make them wrong. I owe Mei Ying for reminding me of that fact. I can't remember exactly what it was I said to her. Something about how the signal was the only thing in this bloody wasteland that mattered. But her reply stopped me cold. Your voice, just then, it sounded like Rockwell's. I didn't say much after that. For a change, Mei Ying did most of the talking. Unlike me, she doesn't care about the mysteries of this place. The space stations, the end of the world, none of it. She just wants to keep us, me, safe. I should be grateful for that. I mean, I am, but I need time to think. It's been a day of reversals, I guess. I'd slunked off to brood somewhere, and Mei Ying tracked me down to talk, mostly about a subject we'd been avoiding. Diana, since she'd opened my wound, she'd opened hers, she said. It didn't feel like a fair trade. The way she clutches that necklace and how she smiles when she remembers the woman who gave it to her. 
There's a gentleness there that she offers to nothing else. To persevere with a wound so deep that it may never heal, her will must be extraordinary, but maybe it helps that we're limping onward together. And maybe as long as we're here to prop each other up, we'll see this through. In the end, Mei Yin changed her vote, and the eyes had it. We're following the signal. As the signal grew stronger, I'd been anticipating catching the first sight of the source. This afternoon it finally happened. It's a massive, monolithic structure that somehow looks ominous even on the horizon. I mean honestly, what was I expecting in a place like this? A pub? The ruins we've seen aren't exactly brimming with hospitality, or pints for that matter. Sadly. That said, it does seem to stand apart from the other buildings, almost as if it was built separately. That would make sense if it was connected to the station somehow, and also explain why it has power. As to its purpose, well there's only one way to find out. And that concludes part one of Elena's notes on extinction, and we continue this time tomorrow with part two, so if you're new here don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on more art content from myself. And as always, thoughts and comments are always welcome down below. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see ya.